Okay, talking about FT8 configuration. FT8 has become a very popular mode in the past year, year and a half. It's taken off uh, quite dramatically. Much activity in FT8. Uh, I've been participating in FT8 but a little over a year and having a lot of fun with it. Typically, uh, radio teletype, which was the original digital mode that I got involved with, involves one signal at a time and you only look for one signal, you use a very narrow filter. FT8 typically you use a very wide filter. You use a sideband filter that can be up to three kilohertz wide, and you may copy four, five, six, seven, fifteen simultaneous signals at the same time, all being decoded, and you can pick which one you're going to respond to. Uh, so FT8 has used some very interesting, and I, th uh, f I think it's called Fourier analysis or mathematical analysis of the incoming signals and can keep track of where each individual signal is and each individual uh, station is. And then when you respond to a given station, it knows to respond at the frequency he is listening to. FT8, uh, and some of the questions that we at TX Engineering get about FT8 is how do I set up? And typically you're gonna need a computer, and you're going to need some sort of sound card to do the sound modulation and you're going to need a transceiver. However, some of the very modern transceivers such as the ICOM 7300 and the new ICOM 7610 among others actually have a built-in sound card within them. So uh, sometimes when a customer calls and has that type of radio we can indicate hey you really don't need to buy a signal link or a sound card external to your radio. It's already built in. You can save some money and the, fortunately the sound cards that are built into these sort of radios are high quality and very uh, very receptive to uh, FT8 and other digital modes. The beauty of FT8, that is a very low level signal. It is possible to decode an FT8 signal that you don't even know is there. It shows up on your screen uh, some of the, the folks at the radio club that I belong to have been able to copy worldwide using five watts of power, which is great for people that may live in apartment buildings where external antennas are frowned upon or disallowed. Uh, you can work with antennas that are in your apartment or up in your attic and still make uh, contacts worldwide. And uh, that was the whole idea of FT8 here is a, a low level signal uh, re receiving and transmitting uh, technique. That, uh, that's what it, the whole idea. And there are a few people that do use a lot of power in FT8 and as a result they tend to obliterate anybody uh, nearby them. The nearby signals are, there's so much splash from a nice, oh, uh, somebody using a kilowatt on that, uh, their, their signal can blend over and, and, and quash some of the, the uh, smaller signals and they make lots of friends that way. I say that from the perspective of occasionally I'll get a cu customer calling in and he says I want to I want to buy an amplifier for FT8 and immediately I'm, I'm grinding my teeth because it's not really the, the, the reason that for that mode if you wanted to do radio teletype with an amplifier a signals a single signal that's one thing but if you're going an FT8 typically I would I would discourage anybody from using more than 30 or 40 watts at the top end uh, for FT8 so that they can coexist, be a good neighbor. You know, there's all these signals in that three kilohertz bandwidth. If you use too much power, now you've just basically become a bit of a pig and taken over too much of that bandwidth to the exclusion of some other guys that may not want to, to run that much power. Is it difficult to set up FT8? Well, that is one of the, the classic uh, questions that I would have to answer, it depends. And the reason it depends is uh, what is the technical level of the person that's, that's taking up FT8? If it's been somebody that's been involved with computers and that for a long period of time, they're gonna be very comfortable with it. If it's somebody that's now struggled to get the ham license to begin with and don't understand some of the basic concepts, they're gonna need some help. Now, the W. SJT, which is the name of the program that does FT8 that was developed by Joe Taylor, that's the chap that has the Nobel in, in physics, 
Uh, that software is available on the Princeton.edu website, and there is fantastic documentation. One of the chaps here in the Portage County Radio Club is a support person for uh, FT8, and he often ends up answering the questions. And uh, in a conversation I had with him a couple of weeks ago, he indicated usually when a question comes in, he says, look at page five of the instruct setup instructions, page, page five, paragraph two, it's answered. And a lot of people just refuse to, to, to read. They, they want to have all the fun without doing some of the reading and, and learning that's necessary to, to get going.